There is a secret hidden for thousands of years. As the master of food and beverage of this place, he will reveal it to you. The world needs to know. His name is Paul Schenk. Hi, I'm Paul Shank, and I'm here to introduce you to the world's best kept culinary secret. It's Korean food, better known as hanshik here in Korea. Now we're going to make duenjang jjigae. What is duenjang jjigae? Duenjang is fermented soybeans, and jjigae is stew. So it's a fermented soybean stew. It's really easy to make. Let's give it a crack. So the first step is making the stock. For the stock, I've got water in front of me. It's about four cups. It's cold. I'm going to add to it some kelp or dashima. It's dried. I'll add that to the water, put that inside. I'm going to bring this to the boil. We'll bring it to the boil for, once it reaches the boil, we'll boil it for three minutes. It's because it becomes bitter and it also becomes very gelatinous. So bring it to the boil, three minutes, we take out the kelp. In the meantime, we need some vegetables for the dish and some other ingredients. We've got a few little magic ingredients. So we'll start by preparing the zucchini. So I'll just take off the bottom and the top. We'll cut it in half, cut it into quarters. I'll keep this one to the side. You can see we've got seeds inside. I want the seeds out. So I'll just simply run the knife to take out the core. Let me run the knife through. I want cubes about one centimeter in size, squared. So we'll put that into the tree, line them up, and then they don't have to be perfect. This is a stew. It's rustic. It's home style. Mum is cooking. I'm going to use one quarter of an onion only. So the other three quarters I'll put to the side. One centimeter chunks. Mushrooms are next. I'll just take off the top like so. Slice them, same size, one centimeter cubes, roughly. That's the mushroom done. Spring onions, I'll cut that in half. I'll just slice it straight through. This one's straight through. All right, we're up to the chilies. I'm going to put in two chilies, one red, one green. The chilies I'm going to clean. I cut the heads off, cut them in half. And we take out, I'm going to take out the seeds. But in between that, the kelp is ready. So I've just got to strain that off quickly. I've got a pot here to replace that with. I'm going to pour that into the replacement pot. You can see the kelp. Three minutes, it's done. The water has beautifully seasoned with the kelp. And now the next step is the anchovies. I've got some dried anchovies here. They're already cleaned, fully cleaned, and the heads are off. Um, you can boil these for as long as we like because they have been cleaned. I'm going to put that into the stock now. We're only going to boil them for five minutes, and then we'll strain that off. Back to the chilies. So with the chilies, come in, Duncan. I'll show you how to clean a chili. You can see half the chili there. I'm going to get the, the blade of the knife down and drag it across. I'm going to slice them finely gorgeous taste and the, the brilliant smell and a great look to the dish. Okay, chilies are ready. My stock is right in front of me. I've got to get cracking with this. It's been boiling for five minutes with the anchovies. That's ready to strain now. I'll bring that here. See the anchovies going in. So that's our stock ready for the next step. I've got the magic ingredient, duenjang here. So this is duenjang jjigae, like I said. So half of this, I'll bring it to the boil and of course taste it. So I've got some garlic to go in. I just want one spoon, nice garlic aroma. Gochugaru, dried chili powder. This is what makes it so delicious. We'll mix this up with the duenjang. Keep boiling or simmering. We're going to simmer this for a further 15 to 20 minutes. 
Normally for Duen Zhang Jigye, you could use any cut of beef, honestly. It's a real farmer's dish. Um, it's very natural and very rustic. So today I'm using sirloin. Little pieces, similar size to the vegetables, maybe a little bit bigger. We've got nice little chunks. So we're not pre-sautéing pre it or pre-seasoning it. We're going to put it in the pot in the middle. Look at that. Okay, I've just got to take this off the boil. I'm going to introduce a little burner. Now, my Dolsot pop, pot, the beautiful dish here, does not work on my induction, so I've had to bring in some gas. Um, we'll turn that on, get it heated. I've got my stock ready. I'm going to put in the stock to my ingredients. Oh yeah, look at this. Gorgeous. This will be enough to that point there. We're going to bring it to the boil, say 10 minutes or simmer. I'll turn it down, we'll simmer it for 10 minutes. And then we've got one little final touch to do and we're good to go. Okay, my Duen Zhang Jige is almost ready. We've got the final ingredient that I need to go grab. Come with me, Duncan, we'll go grab it. Where is it? So here it is, tofu. Now tofu is another incredible ingredient or incredible product that comes from the ingredient soybeans. You can't believe that tofu, which is so soft and mild and subtle, is from the exact same product that Dwenjung is from. Um, obviously a totally different process in, uh, in the production, but uh, another wonderful product from soybeans. So we take out the tofu from its liquid. This is a hard tofu. There's two types, soft and hard. This one is hard. Although, I like how they say it's hard, it's still very soft. You've got to be very delicate with it. So I'm just after pieces about a centimetre thick. Tofu is uh, an incredible ingredient that gives it a great texture. So we simply put this tofu into the Dwenjang Jige. You can see that it's uh, ticking over, simmering nicely. This is only going to be a couple of minutes out now. I would say four, five minutes like this, and we're good to eat. We're ready to go. All right, we're almost ready to go. I've just got to give it a taste and make sure I'm happy with the recipe. You know, of course, the chef has to taste everything you make. And that's why or how you know if it's good or bad. Ah, oh, that is gorgeous. That is incredible. I absolutely love the flavor of Dwenjang and Dwenjang Jige. So there we have it. I'm going to put a nice garnish on top. It's just some green onion, julienne, a little bit more chili as if you had, haven't had enough. We've just uncovered another world's best kept secret. This is Duen Zhang Jige, also known as fermented soybean stew. You know, this is an absolute Korean classic. It does take time to get used to this one, but it's a gorgeous dish once you are used to it. I hope you enjoy making it, and better still, hope you enjoy eating it even more. I'm Paul Shank, and I'm here to introduce you to the world's best kept secret. Korean food, better known as hanshik here in Korea. I've got in front of me a big bowl of steamed, soft, gorgeous rice. Today that gives away my theme for my recipes, I'm making sambap. Sambap literally means wrapped rice. And wrapped rice comes in so many varieties in Korea. Rice is the staple. Now it's time for us to give these recipes a crack 
I've got to go to the fridge for the first recipe, so come with me. Okay, for the first dish, I need cabbage. Cabbage is there. And I need mushrooms. I've got my mushrooms too. All right, so I've got my cabbage and my mushrooms. For the cabbage, I'm going to use the outer leaves purely as the wrap. All right, we'll cut that in half. I'll take out the core. And what I'm after is the outer leaves. So I want this part of the cabbage only. We just pop that into our steamer. This is literally just water steaming. And I'll cover that back up. 10 minutes, 10 minutes we're going to steam that for. In the meantime, I need to put in mushrooms into my rice. I'm going to do a fine dice. So I need to just take off the top layer as well. We'll slice it thinly and then turn it around to dice it. Okay, my pan's hot, ready for sauteing the mushrooms. I'm just going to put in a dash of oil. My cabbage is steaming there. In go the mushroom. I'll saute just a little of it, half a touch of salt. Of course, salt is flavor. It's that simple. Very quick saute, Kyogo mushrooms. So I just need to take out some of this gorgeous steamed rice. I'm going to mix it up with the mushroom. So as you can see, this is an ideal dish for vegetarians. Seasoned sauteed mushrooms. Mushrooms is one. Touch of sugar. Salt. Once again, salt is flavor, so a little bit of salt. I've got black sesame seeds. Sesame gives a great distinct flavor, so a pinch of a good pinch of sesame seeds. Lemon juice, a couple of teaspoons of lemon juice. Makes it a, gives it a nice tart flavor. And to give it a bit of sharpness, we've got vinegar. Mix it up well. So we're ready to go with the rice. The cabbage, we'll take off the lid. It's looking good. Take out the cabbage. You can see that's uh, gone very soft. One more piece. Run it under some cold water. Cold water will instantly stop cooking that. Okay, so the cabbage has cooled. What I'll do first is trim. I'll trim first and then dry. These parts here, the thick parts, I cannot have, it won't work. Has to be all thin for me. Next leaf, take out the core. All right, so I've got my towel here. Dry out piece by piece. Okay, see that? Dry. Here I have a bamboo mat, just for rolling. You can also use aluminium foil or you can use cling film if you fold it enough times to create yourself a map, a mat. Um, what I will do is lay out the cabbage. Look at that. It's, anybody would have thought I had that measured. It's perfect, perfect fit. And we need to cover the uh, pretty much the entire mat with the leaf. All right, I'll put one piece in here. And you can see the mat is covered evenly. We're going to put the rice on the first two-thirds of the cabbage. Okay, we're looking good. Looking good. Ready for the rolling part. I'm going to scrunch this over to here. And then you can see it folded over to there. And then we scrunch it in. Scrunch it in. Scrunch it in. Scrunch it in. That's what's going to make it stick. We're going to roll this over now. Roll it over. Roll it over. We'll tighten it by giving it a bit of a squeeze and a, and a bit of a jiggle. I want this a nice, round, even shape. After three to five minutes, it should be perfectly round and ready for us to cut. Sambap, first round. We've done, we're up to round two. I'm just gonna go to the fridge and grab a few more ingredients for this one. Come with me, Duncan, check it out.
Next one. Look at that. I'm looking for kimchi. I've got it. Some pork, some garlic. I need a cucumber. All right. All base is loaded. My hands are full. Don't worry. So, first thing I need is a cucumber. Cucumbers here. I've got some minced pork. Okay, I'll do it step by step. Cucumber first. This one has to be done first because it takes a little bit of time. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off all these little sharp bits on the cucumber. Makes it nice and smooth. There we go. That's done. We cut the cucumber in half. Lengthways. Cut it in quarters. Lengthways. And then we'll take out the seeds. You can see the seeds there. Just simply run the knife through taking out the seeds. So you're left with the flesh and the skin. What I'm going to do, I'll cut it in half, speed my time, slice this very finely, super fine. Look at that. To that I add salt, a good pinch of salt. And what this will do this will draw out the moisture from the cucumber and also give it a little bit of flavour. If you do this for too long, the cucumber changes colour and it also becomes very soft. There's nothing wrong with that, but I want mine crisp. So half an hour maximum will be enough. The second step is pork. So I've got lean minced pork here, put in half of this. So I've got pork in there, spring onions, I don't want too much. Garlic, maybe a teaspoon, some black pepper, some crushed or ground black pepper, just for a bit of flavour, and some sesame seeds. A touch of soy sauce, and a dash of sesame oil, just for, uh, again, another depth of flavour. So I can feel the heat. There's plenty of heat coming up off that now. I'll give it a, I will give it a dash of oil, just for a bit of lubrication. And I'll put the pork in there. And I want to keep stirring it while I'm cooking it. If you don't like pork or you don't want pork, you can certainly use another vegetable type of filling. So I'll grab the bowl. Duncan, come on in, have a look at that. You can smell it. I mean, the, the gorgeous aroma of the pork, the soy sauce, the sesame oil. Mixing this up with some rice and kimchi, you can't go wrong. Look at that. Now we move it over here. Maybe just a little bit more than half rice, half pork. And we'll mix it in well. Okay, something, something's missing. I forgot the, the uh, cucumber, the pickled cucumber that I had sitting aside here. That's okay. I've got to add it to the rice and to the pork mix. I'm going to add half to begin with. And I'll see if it's enough. All right, so we're ready for the pork filling. I've laid it out and I'll show you simply the strategy to wrapping this or the process to give it that flavor. The top will roll over. The sides will fold over. The other side as well. And then we simply flip it, tucking it in as we go. Okay, so that's our kimchi wrap. Sambap is done, ready to go. We'll move on to the next one now, after I clean down. Okay, round two is over. Round three is coming up. It's the dashima sambap. The main wrap is we're going to use this gorgeous thing. This is kelp, seaweed, or also known here as dashima. And what I'll do is I'll put a few pieces in the hot water. In the meantime, I'm just going to get some green, I want the green part of the uh, spring onions. Very finely chopped. This is for color and for flavor, of course. This ingredient here is the salted Pollack roe. Now, Pollack is a, is a fish that's found commonly in Korea. It's a saltwater fish, actually a brackish water fish. And this roe is the egg of the fish. It's salted, pickled, and like most things in Korea and Korean food, it's great um, 
example of slow food. And you'll see that it's got hundreds and thousands of eggs inside. And that is the salted Pollack eggs that are pickled, fermented. I'll scrape them up, put them into, into the mixture for mixing. See, the rice is still nice and moist. Still got moisture, texture. That's about how much I want. I've got sesame seeds here, a good couple of pinches of sesame seeds, some sesame oil, just a dash to give it uh, some viscosity or some, some fluid uh, texture. Now, mixing this up, all right, so my mix is ready to go. You can see that there. Of course, I have to give this a taste test make sure that the filling's good. No, that's, that's really good. Nice saltiness, full flavour. I'm happy with that. Now we have to make the, um, the wrap. I've got the kelp here. I'll take one piece into the boiling water. This will be a very quick process. We pull that out, strain it, run it under some cold water. That'll immediately stop it from cooking. Okay, ready to go. Cold water. In Korea, this is grown prevalently. It's everywhere. And it's a great ingredient and used a lot in Korean food. I'll put it on my board. I'm looking for about four centimeters wide that we can wrap around. Duncan, come on in, have a look. I want to wrap this around to about that size. I want to dry the kelp because what's going to happen with the kelp, it's, uh, it's not as sticky as the other ingredients and it's not going to hold. So I really want it very dry. Okay, now for the, now for the rice wrapping part. I'll use my hands for this and we're lucky, we're lucky for that. Put it inside here. At the end of the wrap, I'm going to press down, come and have a look at this, I'm going to press down the rice, a couple of pieces of rice, to give me some stickiness. That's going to give it something to hold on to when it wraps around. Okay, that's one. We've got our three sumbups ready. Please, Duncan, come on in, you have to watch me unwrap the wrap. This is the thing that I made earlier, or the wrap that I made earlier, with the cabbage. We're just going to unwrap the bamboo sleeve, and you will see that it's holding its shape like magic. I'm going to slice this. My knife needs to be a little bit wet, otherwise it sticks to the rice. So I want a wet, a wet knife. We take off the end. I don't want the end. I'm really happy with that. It's great. We're ready to plate. This is going to look nice. I've got six pieces of the dashima wrap or the kelp wrap. This is flying fish roe or the eggs of flying fish. Gorgeous golden colour. It's natural colour. You can see how they're uh, just staying together. Okay, I'm just going to fill each one. I'll use the bowl as my guide. How healthy, how natural. We've got the kimchi wrap. One, two, three wraps. And then we've got the cabbage wrap that we made a little bit earlier. I'm going to put five pieces the same as the dashima wrap. Wow, doesn't that look gorgeous? You know, each and every one has a different filling, a different texture, and a different vegetable. The great thing about sambap, you can use whatever vegetable you like, well, you can use many different types of vegetables. We have just uncovered another world's best kept secret. This is sambap, literally meaning wrapped rice. I hope you enjoy making it as much as I do, as much as I did. Enjoy that, it's great.